Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In the previous video, I showed you how to use the Fetch API to get data from APIs. And we had used this JSON placeholder API and we got some data and we displayed it in the console right here. Now in this video, we will go one step further and we will display the data inside HTML elements like headings and divisions and things like that. So let's get started. Now for this example, we're going to use this API called OpenTDB and let's go to this website called OpenTDB.com and this is an API for trivia database. So here we can see there are a lot of questions and answers. So we can use this API to create our own quiz. So let's go ahead and click on API. Now here you can select these options. So we have the number of questions. So I'll just set it to 10 and then we can select the category. So I'll just select computers from here and then we have the difficulty. So you can just select any of these difficulties from here. Or you can just select any difficulty and it will ask from any of these options over here and then we have the type so you can select multiple choice questions or true or false and then we have the encoding and I'll just set it to default encoding and let's click on generate API URL now here we can see the link for the API so let's select this and let's go back to our source code and I'll just paste the link over here in the URL and I'll just delete these console logs from here and here I'll just type data and now let's go to our console and let's see whether the data is being displayed and here we can see we have a response and if we go inside that we have results and in the results we have all the questions and the options and the correct answers so we can see that the API is working all right if you go back over here and if we just type amount let's say amount of six and if we just save it and if you go to the results we can see that we have six questions over here Right now it's time for us to display this in our web page. So let's open the code editor. Now in this video I'm not going to write any logic for our quiz. So this will not be a quiz application but we're going to just display all these questions and the options in our HTML. So first of all let's create a division over here to hold all the questions and I'll just give it a class of quiz container. Right now if you go back to our website we can see that we have this results array inside our response. So we're going to directly work with the results array. So here we can just type data dot results and now if we go back we can see that all the results are displayed over here now we're going to create a function to display all this uh, data inside our HTML so let me just comment this line of code and we'll just create a function called display questions so I'll just type display questions over here we haven't created it yet but I will create it in just a minute before that let's pass the results inside our display questions function so I'll just type data dot results and now let's create this display questions function. So I'll just create a function over here. I'll just type const display questions and we'll just create an arrow function over here. And here in the arguments, we're going to get these results. So we'll just store them as results. You can name this variable anything you want. Right now here we'll write the code to display all the questions. Now what we need to do is we need to loop through all the items inside the results. So we'll just use a for loop for this. So I'll just have for and uh, here we'll just type let and we'll just name the variable i. This is going to be the iterator. So I'll just type zero. So the i will start from zero and we'll keep going till the length of this results. So I'll just type less than results dot length. So in our case, it will loop for six times because we have set the amount to six. And then lastly, here we need to type i plus plus to go to the next item. And first of all, let me just display everything inside our console. So I'll just type console.log and uh, then we need to type results and here we need to write the index. So in the index, I'll just type i because i starts from zero and goes to six. So it will start from the first question. And now if you go back to our website, we can see that we have all the questions displayed over here. Now here we can see for the question, we have this key question. So if you want to display the question, you can just type question. And now we can see all the questions are displayed over here. Now I'll just uncomment this and uh, let's see what is the structure. And here we can see for the options. And if you open this, we can see for the options, we have a key called incorrect answers. And it is also an array. So we have an array inside another array. And for the correct answer, we have a key called correct answer. So here I just type console.log results. And here we'll just type correct answer. And now for the incorrect answers, we need to have one more for loop. 
so I'll just type 4 and for this one we'll just create a variable called j and we'll start from 0 and we need to go till the number of elements that we have inside the incorrect answers array so here we'll just type results and here we'll just type i and then we need to type dot incorrect answers dot length and then we'll type i plus plus and here we'll just add a console.log so I'll just type console.log and I will just type results and here we'll just type i dot incorrect answers and here we'll just type j because it runs from 0 till the number of items inside the incorrect answers and here in the end I'll just type console.log and I will just type some separator over here right now let's go back to our web page and here we have a typo so let's go back and uh, it is right here we need to write console and also here we need to type j instead of i so I'll just type j over here and even here we'll just type j plus plus right now let's go back and here we can see we have all the questions and the options so everything is looking all right now let's display this in our HTML so the first thing we need to do is we need to create some elements so for that you can just type const and we just name it question and for the question we're going to use an s3 so let's type document dot create element and here we need to type s3 and inside the s3 we need to add the question so for that you have to type question dot inner html equals and uh, for the questions we can just type results i dot question so I'll just copy this and I'll just paste it over here and then we need to add this question to this quiz container so I'll just create a constant over here so I'll just type const quiz container and I'll just type document dot query selector and uh, we have a class of quiz container over here so I'll just type dot quiz container so this will reference our quiz container inside this constant and I'll just add this question inside the quiz container so for that you have to type quiz container dot append child and here we need to pass the question right now let's go back to our website and here we can see we have the s3 for all the questions I'll just dock this uh, console to the right Right, so here we have all the questions inside the S3 now let's create some divisions for the options so let's go back now for the options we're going to create a container division and we'll just call it options container so let's type const options container and we'll just type document dot create element and this will be a division so I'll just type div and we'll also give it a class so I'll just type options container dot class list dot add and we'll just give it a class of options container and now we need to add this options container to our quiz container so let's type quiz container dot append child and here we'll just type options container now first of all let's add the correct answer so I'll just type const and we'll just create a division for that so I'll just type option and we'll just type document dot create element and it is going to be a div and then for the inner HTML I'll just type option dot inner HTML equals and we can just copy this from here so results i correct answer and I'll just paste it over here and then we need to add this option to the options container so let's type options container dot append child option let me just show you how the structure is gonna look so here in the quiz container we're gonna have an s3 and here we're gonna have the question and then here we're gonna have a division with the class of options container and in that we're going to have divisions in that we'll have the option 1 and the option 2 and so on so this is how the structure is going to look and if you go back we can see that we have the question and the correct answers displayed over here right now let's also display all the other options so here I'll just type const option equals document dot create element and we we'll just create a div and here in the option inner HTML we we'll just type results i and for the options we can just type incorrect answers j so this will loop through all the incorrect answers and it will display all of them over here and let's add this to our options container so I'll just type options container dot append child option and let's go back right now we can see that all the options are displayed over here now there's one issue with this approach that the correct answer will always be the first option so here we can see true is the correct answer and it is always first so since we are adding the correct answer over here at the beginning and then we are adding the other options 
we have the correct answer displayed first. So I'll just show you how to fix that. Now this is not a video on creating a quiz application, but I'll just show you how to randomize these options. Now we're going to create a function called randomize options. And we're going to pass the options container over here because in that we have all the options. And let's create the function randomize options. So I'll just create it over here. Just tap const randomize options. And here we have all the options. Now we can create something called a document fragment. And in that we will add all the options and we'll just randomize the order. And then we'll replace the normal options with the randomized options. So let's create a variable called randomized. And here we'll just type document.create document fragment. And let's create a while loop. And we will loop through all the items inside the options container. And uh, we are receiving that over here as options. So let's type options dot children dot length. So this will get the length of the options container. I'll just rename this to options container so that it will be easier to follow. Now here inside the while loop, we're going to just type randomized dot append child. Now here we're going to randomly append any of the options from the options container. So for that, let's type options container dot children. Now for the index, we need to add a random value. So for that, we're going to use a built-in method called math.random. So let's type math.random. And we need to multiply it with the length of the options container. So let's type times options container dot children dot length. Now this will give us some random values from zero through the length of the options container. Now math.random will also give us some decimal values. So for that, we'll just type math.floor to convert the decimal values into an integer. So I'll just close this over here. Now let me just briefly explain to you what is going on over here. Here we are using a while loop and we are looping for the number of elements inside the options container. For example, we have four elements in the options container. So it will loop for four times. And here we have created a randomized document fragment. Now in this document fragment, we can add some elements. So for adding the elements, we are using append child. And in that we are adding random options. So here we can see we are going through options container children and we are generating a random value from zero through four in our example. And then after the while loop, we need to update the options container. So let's type options container dot append child and we'll just append the randomized document fragment. Right now let's go back to our website and let's see whether it works. So here we can see we have the questions and the options. And here the first option is true, which is the correct answer. But here you can see we have false. And then we can see for the second question, we have objective C as the correct answer. But here we can see we have C++ at the beginning. And then for the third question, we have Intel 4004 as the correct answer. And we have the correct answer at the third place. So it is being randomized correctly. So that's basically how you display the elements from an API into the HTML. Now let's add this to our blogger website and let's see whether we have any problems. All right, so here I'm in my blogger dashboard. Let's go over here to new post and uh, let's create a new post over here. And I'll just give the title as quiz and make sure that you are in the HTML view. And let's go back to our source code and let's copy all the code. So I'll just copy it from here till uh, the end over here. And uh, let's paste it over here. All right now let's click on publish. And let's click on view post. And here we can see our quiz is being displayed. We have the questions, we have the options and everything is displayed correctly. Now you can further go ahead and add some CSS and make it look good. I already have a video on how to create a quiz from scratch. You can go ahead and watch that and you'll get some ideas from there as well. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.